Well, you may have seen me post about these Arduino-based lightsabers once before. I had uh, this one here up and running for six months for my son. Worked great. And you can see some videos about how that works. I won't recreate it here. But eventually this handle fell apart. Um, it was before we tried to use um, a really good glue. And so uh, the super glue just eventually fell apart. And so the board still works, but this part's gone. I'm extremely grateful to a neighbor. Um, I reached out for help on our neighborhood Facebook page because I was smoking these boards left and right. Actually, it was even before that. I couldn't even get them to turn on. And this guy who's really good with electronics, his name's Ryan. Extremely grateful for him. He offered to help me. And then it turns out he uh, loves 3D printing. So he's been 3D printing these hilts for me along with a few other pieces. And the whole project turned out a lot better. Uh, this may sound crazy, but I may have never done something in my life which I found to be so vexing and frustrating and required uh, for me personally an insane amount of perseverance. And uh, a friend of mine yesterday or two days ago made the comment, wow, you've had more success than I have, indicating that this is my biggest failure. But I responded by saying, no, he's just done a lot more than I have. So I want to walk you through what I found. And I'm also interested in your comments. If you uh, know more about electronics than I do, then um, I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you disagree with our analysis, but perhaps this will cue you on to something that is helpful for you. So I've been using a board setup that I got on GitHub by a Russian guy named Giver. So this is called the Giver Saber. It's a playoff words from like MacGyver. And some of the wiring diagrams, uh, some of the wiring choices that he made, this guy in the neighborhood suggested I change. So we changed just a couple things, nothing major. Mostly that we did not provide the accelerometer and the SD card with a separate ground off of one of these analog pins. We just let it use normal ground. We weren't sure why he used a separate pin, he isolated it. Perhaps that makes sense, but we, uh, yeah, my friend Ryan decided, he said it's not necessary. And then I think that was the only major thing that we changed. So well, the other thing that we changed because we were using these 3D printed parts instead of like plumbing parts like this Russian guy had done, this did not accept three 18650 LEDs. Uh, the packaging didn't allow for it. And I'm not sure what this guy, I think he was suggesting using double A's, the guy who made this thing. But Ryan suggested that we use lipos, which is, uh, I don't ask me much about it. But what I was explained is that 18650s are really good for um, lots of power, but a relatively slow discharge rate. These are what are used in drone applications. And they can, as you can see here, high discharge, they can basically dump lots of amperage fast. Now this is really not what you would want to use in this application because you don't need lots of amps fast, but this fit inside the lightsaber and so we went with it. Uh, the other thing that was nice about this is that when you go to recharge it, you use a charger like this. So you have power and ground, which goes here, but then you also have this balance circuit that goes here and that allows the charger to see all three of the cells that are in here. And that was something that I learned, perhaps you already know this, but when you charge an overall battery pack where there are three separate battery cells inside here, there's a risk that one gets a little overcharged and another one gets a little undercharged. And if that happens too much over time or with a high frequency, it can lead to an undercharged and an overcharged cell that is unable to be detected if you're only looking at voltage here and that can lead to a fire. And that's why these balance leads are used to make sure that they all get balanced correctly. Okay, so this says right on it 11.1, .1, but when you get it off the charger, it actually is closer to 12.6. Now, on a Arduino Nano, there is basically two ways to power this thing. Right in front of my thumb, you'll see a VIN, that stands for voltage in, and a few down the row, you see 5V. Well, the spec says that you have to send 5 volts to the 5V, no surprise there. And then it says that you can send anywhere from 7 to 12 
into the voltage in pin. Now, we were running 12.6, uh, which is too high. Now, the very strange thing that was happening is basically I would plug this board, I would plug these boards in, no load, no speaker, no LED strip, and it would immediately smoke. And what would smoke was the Nano, and what would smoke is that big, almost looks like a transistor, right in front of my thumb, the four wire converter. That's a voltage converter, as I've learned. And what that does is it takes whatever comes in on the VIN pin and dumps whatever it doesn't need to, to just lower it down to five. So if you send it seven, it'll dump two and keep five. If you send it 10, it'll keep five, dump five. And the more you send it, the more that five, the more that five volt regulator has to work. So if you send it five, it doesn't have to work at all, so far as I understand. Now, the very interesting thing, and unfortunately I've already unbuilt it, but I had a breadboard set up and I had all of these components in the breadboard, every single one, and everything worked perfectly. The saber turned on, it made noise, it controlled the LEDs, everything worked perfect. I then removed those components out of the breadboard and soldered them onto here, and instantly they would go up and smoke. Now, having put it on a breadboard first, ruled out that there was a problem with the software, or there was a bad nano, or there was a shorted component, it essentially verified, or as we would have said at Volkswagen, it certified all of these components as good, which in my mind meant the only thing left that could have happened is I could have wired it wrong. And I spent literally hours and hours comparing this board, which worked for the last six months, with all of these other boards, which I had wired the exact same way. I took out the ohm meter, I checked everything that was conceivable, one of these, I had actually um, soldered in a socket, not the Nano itself, so that the Nano could be um, removed and inserted again. It wasn't this socket. I don't have any more that I can show you. And the one is already in a lightsaber. But basically, if you're not familiar with this, this allows you to um, basically install and uninstall the Nano just by lifting uh, like you would on a breadboard. And what's nice about that is you don't have to desolder all this. So on that other board that had the socket, I did a bunch of more diagnosing because I could change out the Nano and I ended up smoking three more Nanos. So in the last few days, I've smoked, you know, eight Nanos, which is, uh, they're about five bucks a piece. And we're gonna come to exactly that point is that they're only five bucks a piece. And that's because these are not official Arduino Nanos. Those cost around $15. These are clones. And I bought clones because I was told that it would be fine and they're a lot cheaper. And I had plans to build nine of these lightsabers. So that's considerable savings, five over 15. Anyhow, back to what we figured out about these boards. So it seemed that if everything worked in the breadboard perfectly here, but then didn't work in the prototype board, then it must be a wiring issue. And yet I looked it over, my friend Ryan looked over, nothing could be found. So. I actually went back to lunch the other day at Volkswagen, was chatting with some of my colleagues, and they recommend, one of my colleagues, Phil, recommended something that, that I had thought about but hadn't yet done, and that was to run the Arduino just off of five volts. Now, again, we have 12.6 when it's fully charged coming in, but the interesting thing is that the speaker uh, runs off of this amplifier. And this amplifier is five volt only, as you see here, 5V. So it cannot accept 12 volts as an input or it'll fry it. So we already have this MP1584 in the circuit. This is a voltage converter. And if you're not familiar with these, it's kind of cool. Right where my screwdriver is, is a little potentiometer. And you can, you can move that back and forth and you can basically limit the voltage that comes in from 12.6 all the way down to almost nothing. So I have these set at five. Well, as you can imagine, that's a perfect solution to run the board off of the five volt pin instead of the 12.6 VIN pin. So we changed the wire diagram just a little bit. This uh, VIN pin used to go straight to power. Now it comes off the five volt converter and you'll see uh, sorry, you will see that little wire right here. And 
it worked. In fact, it worked so well that I took the time to desolder the nanos off of these boards because these boards take me about four hours to make if I'm concentrated and then at the end I'm kind of exhausted because I'm not that good at this stuff, you could say. Uh, but desoldering and resoldering the nano only takes me, takes me about a half hour. And to that point, maybe I'll just mention, if you're watching this, perhaps you don't know, when you go to desolder something so long like this, it can really be a challenge because even if you use a really good solder sucker like this one, which is incredible if you don't have this one, it's only $17, made in Japan. I don't know how they do it for that kind of cost, but the suction is really, really, really good. Or even if you use solder wick, it seems that you can never get 100% of the solder out of the pinhole. And that means you need to wiggle it a little bit to get it out. Now on a small four pin or six pin, it's not a super big deal, but when you have to wiggle, you know, 15 pins on each side, it becomes, I think, just impossible. Now, the other thing that sometimes people do is they'll feed a ton of solder into all of these connections, and then they'll run the soldering iron kind of up and down very quickly so that all of them become liquefied. And so you basically have an entire liquefied row of connections, and then you can lift it. And that works, but it really only works for a connection like this where you can lift from one side because that other side's not pried down, or this one. On a nano board, it, it is, in my opinion, almost impossible because you basically have to liquefy both rows. So what I did, in case this is helpful for someone if you're in a similar circumstance, is I desoldered all of these <laughs> wiring connections, then I solder sucked uh, all of the connections, and thankfully, I don't have all the pins on the Nano going through. The first thing I do before I install a Nano is I clip all the pins that I don't need because I only need those pins. So I clip almost half the pins. So thankfully, all the Nano pins weren't through the board. So I solder suck all of them. If it seems like you've solder sucked like 90%, it's almost impossible to get that last 10%. A better solution is to re-solder it so actually remake the connection and then solder suck again. It's one of those things where if you have a fully soldered connection, sometimes when you solder suck, you get 100. But if you only have like 10% left, it, you basically can't get a proper suction on it. So you kind of got to re-solder and then suck again. Anyhow, after those are desoldered, you're able to wiggle it just a little bit. And then I got in there with some side cutters. These worked sometimes good. Sometimes these worked a little bit better, and I would sort of cut, pry, cut, pry, cut, pry. In the end, the Nano is destroyed, but that's no problem because it was destroyed anyway. All of the header pins are still in, and then you can remove the header pins. Uh, you can basically cut like this, the header pins into pieces. The black plastic pieces will break apart, and then you can desolder the rest of the board. So anyhow, what was really incredible is my level of despair was very intense. I had the dream and ambition to make six of these for my children and nephews for Christmas. And at the end of Wednesday night, not only did I have no working nanos, except for the one from six months ago, I had no idea why, and I thought all of this was trash. Then the next day, a good discussion with a friend, Phil, he and I kind of came to the same idea, kind of at the same time, but he actually knew that it would work. I just kind of had the idea. He said, yeah, it should work, and it did. And by the end of Thursday, I had uh, six working boards. Almost all of my time that I thought had been lost had been recovered, and I had a plan. Uh, you may laugh, and that's fine, but this project has been a very serious test in perseverance for me. I have literally hundreds of hours into this project. I have literally hundreds of dollars because so many of them have gone up in smoke and I have all of these things that I bought along with the LED strips and the tubes and the blades and a lot of accessories and all the batteries. So it really has been uh, a challenge for me personally. Obviously, you know, if you're into electronics hardcore, 
then this is probably child's play, but I'm not. I was working in mechanical engineering and used to be a mechanic and do woodworking and welding and other things. So this is kind of the most advanced electronics thing that I've ever done. Anyhow, one really cool thing is if you're good at diagnostics and troubleshooting and logical thinking, which I think I am, then a lot of it transfers. And then it just becomes a question of being familiar enough with the material to know how to troubleshoot it. So anyway, that's kind of the uh, progress on this lightsaber project. If you were following or maybe stumbled upon this or maybe you just like the sound of my voice. <laughs> You're probably not listening anymore, and that's okay too. Anyhow, if you are discouraged, then uh, you're in good company. And my encouragement to you would be not to give up, but also see if you can track down someone who knows more about this than you do and ask for some consultation. Most people are happy to give away their time and their voice for free. And uh, often it's a compliment because you're going to them as some sort of expert. So thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Phil. If somehow you happen to be watching this, I'm so appreciative to you guys. Take care.